Hi, I'm Mark Gaylor and I'm a Sony Imaging Ambassador. This is my review of Sony's FE 70-200 G Master lens and it's their second Mark II version. So we'll be looking at some of the key differences between uh, this newer lens and the older version. Now if we take a look on the side of the lens you're going to see considerably more buttons which will give you a lot more control on this Mark II version. One of the key differences here is the DMF or full-time direct manual focus. This allows us, uh, even when we're in autofocus, whether AFS or AFC, just to quickly turn the focus ring and either fine-tune the focus or move it a long way. Now when we're working with these longer telephoto reaches, sometimes it, uh, a lens can struggle if we quickly uh, shift from photographing something at the closest focusing distance to something at near infinity. And having that DMF just allows us to quickly rotate take the focus ring and push uh, the focus into the ballpark where it can then quickly engage on the subject that we want to photograph. Now we do have a focus limiter on the lens as well so if you're photographing um, something that is not very close to the lens you can limit uh, the range of focus that the lens will go through looking to uh, acquire the subject. Now we also have a, a change to the uh, OSS. Um, we have now have three modes instead of two. Now mode one is when we're trying to keep the lens very still, typically with slow shutter speeds. Mode two is when we're uh, panning from left to right or right to left and this disengages uh, the horizontal gyro to allow uh, smooth uh, panning, usually at slower shutter speeds as well. Now we have this new mode th three which is for more erratic motion, something that is not uh, just constrained to left, right, right, left panning, something that might uh, require the lens to be moved quickly vertically. So this uh, mode 3 is ex exceptionally useful for perhaps um, uh, things that are going to be moving uh, very erratically as I've said. Now one of the surprising things on this lens is we now have an aperture ring. So we've got a couple of extra buttons to control that aperture ring. We have an iris lock to uh, lock that in position. We have an A position which allows us to control the aperture from the camera. And we also have a click uh, button on off and this is uh, exceptionally useful for people who are shooting uh, video clips and just need to slide the exposure using the aperture ring and not move through those third of a stop increments. Having optical steady shot in the lens is exceptionally useful for people who are trying to avoid using tripod in low ambient light, basically shooting handheld at slow shutter speeds. Now some photographers might say, well I have in-body image stabilization, so surely that is enough, I don't need it in the lens as well. Um, and that can be said to be true for people using wide angle or standard focal lengths. But when we move up to these longer focal length, it is great to have that optical steady shot in the lens as well because the in-body image stabilization is best suited to the shorter focal lengths. So some um, uh, lens manufacturers actually save a little bit of cost by uh, emitting to add this to their lenses. So having optical steady shot is certainly an advantage. That mode one does allow you to shoot in those low ambient light conditions. So I've uh, done a couple of examples here. This was at the uh, at dawn, the sun has just risen uh, hitting the, um, the skyscrapers in the Melbourne CBD there. Now I'm shooting at a focal length of just approaching 100 millimeters and I've actually uh, slowed the shutter speed down to 1 13th of a second. This was required to keep the ISO at a reasonable ISO 320 and I'm also stopping the aperture down so I've got those uh, foreground masts of those boats as sharp as the skyscrapers in the city in the background. So as we zoom in you can see that uh, the 13th of a second was um, more than enough actually to, to get all of that uh, subject matter sharp. Um, another example that I was uh, doing at the end of the day, um, this is after the sun has set and I'm still shooting handheld. Now I am able to shoot wide open at f2.8 now because uh, there is no immediate foreground that I need to build up the depth of field. 
but because the the sun has long since set I'm actually hand holding at 1 15th of a second at ISO 100 and again if we zoom into 100% uh, actual pixels here we can see all of that uh, information is uh, pin sharp so again hand holding at these slower shutter speeds is a really useful advantage of having this optical steady shot and Sony are claimed uh, improved import, uh, performance over the original Mark 1 version of that lens so we have uh, lots of control via these buttons but um, is that enough for you to want to maybe upgrade to this lens the most significant upgrade to this Mark II version is not the buttons on the side of the lens, but the Quad XD Linear AF motors, uh, lending this camera four times faster AF than the Mark I version. Now, Sony have been building some incredibly fast um, uh, focusing lenses, and this is really necessary if, you've, um, if you're owning an A9 or A1 camera, especially the A1 shooting 30 frames per second. So I was quite keen to test this lens out on some rapidly moving subjects. Now the original uh, Mark I version of the lens was one of the first uh, three G Master lenses, the 2470 G Master, the 70 to 200 G Master and the 85 1.4 G Master. Now I always anticipated that Sony would revisit these lenses to lend um, uh, these lenses their much faster AF technologies courtesy of these XD linear AF motors. I recently tested the, uh, the 50 f 1.2 lens and was really amazed that I could use that lens in a sporting context so again I was really um, keen to get this lens out uh, shooting some rapidly moving subjects to test whether this could actually keep up with the A1 camera. So uh, obviously this uh, these Quad XD linear AF motors replaces the old linear motor plus ring drive SSM motor of the Mark I lens. Now um, of course you're going to have to look at um, some high resolution images so in the info section below this movie you are going to find a link to some 4K and 6K images. This will allow you to maybe download, zoom in and check uh, whether these images are pin sharp. You might get some impression of how sharp this lens is by just viewing this movie in 4K on a large screen. Now you will see these um, three images of the dog in the same sequence of images you can see the uh, the focus is reliably tracking each and every shot and the eyes are pin sharp. Now if I go into a um, 100% uh, uh, zoom on this particular image you can see on the Alpha 1 we do have the advantage of being able to use the Animal IAF in conjunction with the AF tracking and we can quite clearly see the focus is exactly where it needs to be which is on the eyes. You'll notice that um, as the dog is approaching very close to the camera the, the uh, depth of field is getting narrower and so the uh, the front of the nose is not sharp but the focus is exactly as I said where it needs to be on the eyes and the dog is rapidly moving it is in full flight so the big test is can it keep up with the A1 so shooting a dog running at 30 frames per second uh, I was reliably pleased to see all of the images sharp not just most of the images but all of these images in this run were sharp now um, of course sometimes when you're working with a 70 to 200 instead of maybe the 100 400 we sometimes don't find we have enough reach so we might have to use a teleconverter or we might need to crop more aggressively in to that image in order to get um, a 4K image without too much negative space surrounding that object. Now with a G Master lens you are expecting when you crop such so aggressively you'll still see fine detail and that is the case with this particular image. Any one of those images in that sequence could be zoomed in and I would find that the whiskers on the dog would be pin sharp. So this was uh, an excellent test and I have to say the lens passed the test with flying colours. Let's take a look at some of the specs, an overview of some of the specs we've already covered. So what we're getting um, with this Mark II version are the Quad XD linear focus motors, internal focusing, i.e. the lens doesn't get longer as we uh, zoom that lens. We get the full time DMF, we get improved optical steady shot uh, and steady shots modes 1 to 3, that 3 is a uh, new um, steady shot mode. 
uh, we we are getting a similar size lens but it is 29% lighter than the Mark 1 so we've um, also managed to shave off quite a lot of weight uh, from this lens we've got that aperture ring and we have the ability to uh, turn the click of the aperture ring on and off the minimum focusing distance has got closer than the Mark 1 we're now down to 0.4 meters to 0.8 meters obviously the focusing distance getting slightly further further away as we zoom to 200, me 200 millimeters. But that is um, uh, quite an impressive close focusing distance on this lens. Uh, this lens still works with the 1.4 and 2 times teleconverters and I'm going to look at that 1.4 teleconverter in more detail shortly and of course it is weather sealed as a G Master lens and I have used this lens photographing in torrential rain so that 1.4 teleconverter okay um, I am getting impressive sharpness now you do expect a little bit of uh, an erosion of maybe uh, a sharp focus and uh, also AF performance but nothing that is noticeable it is such a sharp lens that having a little bit less sharpness is not that noticeable so again if you zoom in on uh, these um, these 1.4 teleconverter shots you're still going to see a very sharp outcome from uh, using this so here is uh, a 1.4 teleconverter shot with really sharp focus and it is keeping up with the tracking still with the alpha one with the dog running towards the lens so I've got a sequence of these shots again the same uh, run of the dog and again I, I did have to say get a hundred percent hit rate on the sharp focus now Sony aren't claiming um, such a high hit rate they're claiming um, something less than a hundred percent higher than the mark one but um, not hundred percent but with the a1 I'm I am getting that hundred percent hit rate because it is such a reliable uh, fast focusing camera and uh, the lens can keep up so let's look at uh, the detail we're looking at uh, say the 70 mil zoomed out captured wide open here so obviously people are keen to see that uh, you can sh shoot very sharp images without having to stop down so obviously that is often why we want that f 2.8 aperture compared to maybe an f4 aperture zoom lens and yes we do have that sharp detail at 70 millimeters and here is another 70 millimeter of some uh, wall graffiti in a Melbourne alleyway and again zooming in reveals very sharp focus uh, even when captured wide open so again another 70 mil shot um, looking really crisper when we zoomed out and when we zoom in confirmation that again the lens is performing now you may want to go and look at those uh, high resolution images uh, that I've posted uh, in the link there uh, as the ambient light gets low um, we are still getting very sharp focus and again zooming in at that 70 mil zoomed out range zooming in a bit more again um, now we're using some long exposures so uh, the camera is definitely on a tripod now 25 second exposure just a uh, pre-dawn here in Melbourne and uh, again zooming in and we're getting that a uh, really crisp sharp focus in those architectural details there and again uh, 146 millimeters now zooming in to actual pixels and again confirmation that this is um, giving us really rich sharp detail and this one was handheld this one is hand, well, handheld again 146 millimeters zooming in and again confirmation sharp focus wide open now I have shot into the light to see how the uh, the camera deals with um, um, the, the light source uh, quite close to the front of the camera and again we're getting um, really crisp uh, contrast um, we're getting depth we're getting sharp detail shooting into the light at 194 millimeters there and again we're zooming in confirmation that this lens is performing really well shooting into the light now one of the things that uh, I had to do uh, shooting into the light in this particular shot is to uh, um, reduce the exposure so I wasn't clipping the highlights this rendered the uh, the dog that was charging through these waves as almost a silhouette and when I got this uh, image into post-production and opened up the shadows I was amazed that the camera is still <laughs> obviously tracking um, where it needs to be tracking it's still tracking the dog's eye on this alpha one so it's still um, a big uh, success rate even when we're shooting into the light where the subject is almost a silhouette 
So let's take a look at some of these action shots because this is really going to be the forte and this is going to be the driving force for some people who are wanting to upgrade this lens. So we're zooming in 194 millimeters and again our actual pixels, uh, sharp detail around the eyes there. This was a whole sequence of images. I shot uh, maybe 30 to 60 images of, of a, a quick blast. And again, they were all sharp. And so we, we're getting uh, confirmation as we zoom in. It got a little bit tiresome actually zooming in and then realizing it is sharp, just like the previous one and the one before that. Again, really nice sharp detail running through the, the hairs alongside the, uh, the body of that dog there and the, the dog uh, uh, recognizing it's on camera here, uh, tongue out uh, and really sharp detail throughout this sequence and again actual pixels. So I was keen to uh, carry on shooting things that are moving uh, because uh, this is really the forte of this lens and I also wanted to get that uh, perspective compression so getting a, a few kilometers maybe five kilometers away from the city zooming to 200 millimeters bringing that um, uh, for uh, the city in the background much closer to the subject um, and again using a, a high shutter speed one two thousandth of a second handheld and panning with mode two uh, uh, with these subjects that are coming across that beautiful backdrop and I've got lots of these shots and they were all pin sharp no no drop shots in any of these sequences that I zoomed in and you'll see many more examples of different cyclists passing this background even at close range now uh, where the camera is going to have to work much harder to shift focus as the cyclist is coming uh, towards me and then panning across uh, from right to left and again all pin sharp as you can see from the, uh, the whiskers on this guy's chin here. So really pleasing to see this uh, perspective compression and reliable autofocus wide open on all of these shots here. Okay, so uh, as the uh, ambient light um, gets lower, uh, carry on. Now I'm shooting with uh, elevated ISO. This one's ISO uh, 1250 now. Um, I'm having to slow the shutter speed down to keep the ISO of a, a manageable level here. But um, 250th of a second was enough to um, uh, photograph these uh, skaters on, on a pier um, just at twilight now. And again, zooming in, you can see all of these are, are really good to, um, uh, to showcase this image working in low ambient light. And that, of course, is why you're going to choose uh, an f2.8 uh, telephoto zoom over something that uh, probably has a more modest f5.6 or 6.3 maximum aperture. So this is a long time after sunset now and you can see this uh, lens is still performing well at ISO 1600 and uh, zooming in now. Uh, actual pixels uh, to look at the fine detail this lens is still delivering at the uh, elevated ISOs and now um, it's we're moving into uh, night here now slowing the shutter speed down to 1 250th of a second as the light fades we're still getting beautiful um, uh, uh, street style images at night with this uh, telephoto zoom so of course I wanted to test this lens out in um, uh, adverse weather conditions and of course uh, Melbourne is having quite a wet spring here so I didn't have to wait uh, long before uh, we had a, a day of torrential rain so I took this lens out and started photographing in the rain out of cover and just to show you how wet this was um, this uh, I worked for maybe three four hours in uh, this, uh, this torrential rain and the lens uh, didn't uh, miss a beat here and I've got lots of uh, beautiful portraits uh, with this lens. Uh, of course, you're going to go slightly undercover here when you're working at that 200 mil focal length. People are not going to be looking quite so far away to see that they're actually being photographed. And um, a father and son are on a bridge running, try and get out of the rain. I think it's too late. They're already soaking wet. And um, here's a, there's a guy uh, called James that's uh, trying to get a, raise a little bit of money so he can get a bed for the night and uh, he uh, agreed to be uh, photographed. So I got the 200 mil shot but went up and chatted to him for a while and helped him out with some dollars to, so he could get a, a bed for the night and a really uh, close uh, focusing distance. Now, this is the sort of shot I would shoot with uh, maybe an 85mm 1.8 wide open, uh, but you can still get that really shallow depth of field by shooting this at f2.8 
and uh, working at that um, 100 mil or approximate 100 mil focal length, we are still going to get that great figure ground separation. So we can really uh, uh, um, uh, get the eyes in pin sharp focus and not have too many distracting details in the background. The thing that I started uh, collecting was uh, to realize that a lot of people weren't going out to get their midday meal here. So the uh, the food delivery guys were working uh, very busily trying to take people people's lunch to them. And so I started collecting a whole series of images on these uh, food uh, delivery riders here uh, working in the uh, soaking wet conditions. And again, just to show you, I'll zoom in on each one of these in, in case you just don't have the time to visit the uh, links that I, I've posted and showing that all of these are in sharp focus, all captured at 1 500th per second with a little bit of panning uh, with the steady shot mode to engaged. And uh, as you can see, uh, performing really well in all of these shots. So as you can see, um, uh, quite an impressive upgrade from Sony. Um, I have to admit to um, not uh, having owned the 70 to 200 after first reviewing that original uh, Mark I version uh, because I am uh, often shooting things that are moving rapidly. So I've actually been using the 135 G Master which also has those fast linear uh, uh, XD motors. But of course, if you need that little bit more flexibility in a zoom, we now have a 70 to 200 that can keep up with the fastest of cameras. So some people may be very interested in uh, taking a closer look at this lens. OK, so if you've enjoyed the information, uh, just give me the thumbs up, subscribe. And uh, if you're wanting um, a little bit more support with your maybe new Sony camera, I do offer a support via patreon.com forward slash slash Mark Gaylor and for a ten dollar subscription you can download an ebook of your choice for your specific camera and uh, I have Q&A forums and uh, also I share the raw images from a lot of my lens reviews and camera reviews okay I'm Mark Gaylor Sony Imaging Ambassador